We are the first and only podcast to cover this fascinating little tidbit of forgotten UFO history. In fact, there's been no books, movies, documentaries, shows, blog posts, YouTube videos, coast-to-coast episodes, anything about this. Which means you, listening to this right now, are about to become one of the few people on the planet to know about a 15-year-long UFO event. Now, if you haven't listened to episode 60, last week's episode, then you're going to miss some parts of this. I'm not going to go over those details again, or else Joey will get bored and Betsabe will fall asleep. The point of this week's episode is to deliver a few more gems from the report and a little bit of historical context. This is the Darwin UFO flap. I didn't see you there. Something big is going on here. From hunting ghosts to Bigfoot. Paranormal, UFOs, true crime, and more. We won't just be spouting articles. I was researching for your entertainment. The beginning of a new world. <laughs> the best guac you'll ever fucking eat. True story. It's basically like one day you walk outside and you see that the ants are playing with matches. This, this is, is the Black Hat Report. See you on the other side. Hello everybody and welcome to episode 61 of the black cat report the darwin ufo flap my name is gil and joining me as always joey hello and bets bay hi (laughs) now we're just gonna hop right on in a little backstory so In 2013, the Australian government declassified and released over 10,000 documents relating to UFOs. Well, buried within this massive release was the contents of a folder labeled C21-4-4. It's been available for literally anyone on the internet to find and download, but somehow has been lost in the wild mess of that big file dump. In fact, right now, If you want to follow along, which I strongly actually encourage you to do, I'm going to give you exactly what to type into Google to find and download these documents, which seriously, they're fucking fascinating. Give this a try, okay? Mm -hmm. So hit pause, pull up Google, and hit play when you're ready. Done. All right, so type in E499 underscore. C21 dash four dash four underscore four zero eight one two three zero. Are we actually have to do this? You guys don't have to do this. I, I have all the documents. I can share them with you. Or or you can do this, but... <clears throat> that was and, way too and much. You if, lost and if you me. Fell a, if you <laughs> fell asleep doing that or listening to this, wake no, no, up no, no. right now and <laughs> you can listen to the rest of the episode. You yeah. have to, you know... Click the 15-second rewind. No, but th- this is honestly important because, like, I, I, I can't explain this enough. It, it's so hard to get across in a podcast, but, like... The actual rush, there is a legitimate rush of when you come across like real life declassified government documents that you know no one is talking about. No one has seen. None of the none of the fucking documentaries on the History Channel or podcasts or da 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 YouTube, whatever. Nobody's covered it. You're the first person with, with I guess your set of interests to see it. Like that is that is such a fucking rush. I don't care. Mm-hmm. I want you guys to experience this. This is a real thing. You're listening to a professional researcher. I'm sharing it with y'all, all right? So and and by the way, while that's downloading, I have to throw this in there because this is an important thing. Um uh so after you've done that, after you've Googled it, right? Um one of the first links that will show up is to a file hosted on the incredible website called the Black Vault. Now, all you gotta do is click it, it'll start downloading, and you'll be good to go. Also, as a quick side tangent, while that's downloading, um, if you're into UFOs and somehow have never heard of the Black Vault, which is a straight up sin, the Black Vault is one of the most important resources on the internet for pushing disclosure and government transparency. It's run by the FOIA King, John Greenwald Jr. There are 
literally hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of formerly classified government documents that Mr. Greenwald filed Freedom of Information Act requests for, then fought over, and then eventually received, sometimes waiting over 10 years for these government wow. documents to come back after his request. He's been working at this since he was a teenager, right? He's been Why? working on it for so long. It's it's just his thing. It's his passion. It's his side. It's not even like his job. It's like literally, it's it is his passion. I have so much respect for the man. And like, mm-hmm. honestly, the man's work is seriously one of the most important resources in the UFO community. And he and like the dude doesn't charge a dime. There are no paywalls. Everything that he has spent, literally tens of thousands of dollars requesting from the government, waiting for, doing all this work for, he's never charged a dime for anybody to see the results. But with that said, he does take donations, right? So FOIA requests cost money, and I'm not even joking, you can go to the donation page for as little as $1, right? He accepts $1 donations. You can help cover all the fees and help keep the site up. This has been a staple in the UFO community for 15, 20 years, right? So literally since he was a teenager, I think like living with his parents, he's been doing this. He's in his 30s, 40s now. I don't want to like date him too much, but it's been going on most of his life, Mm. right? And this dude is dedicated to it. We owe so much to him. So the link will be in the show notes. Literally, if you have $1, click the fucking link. Send him $1. Instead of going to the strip club... Yeah, that one dollar you could get. I, I, I don't want to take keep... money from other workers, but yeah, um, but True, I yeah. Do... Well, I mean, you could do both. Instead of giving McDonald's an extra dollar too. or Taco Bell or no, no, no. But I, but I don't want to mention. Honestly, though, like seriously, the Black Vault is the shit. Like so much of the recent UFO news and just, just so many things come on. Like it, it relies on the hard work of this man. Mm. and the Black Vault, and what it's been doing for so long. Like, so much of the UFO community, its information somehow trickles out from the Black Vault. It, it's incredible. Yeah. And Anyways, he deserves a round of applause. Round of applause. Right. That's Bay's eating a chip. That counts as a round of yep. applause. <laughs> and we're done. All right, and we're done. Yep. Mm. Anyways, where were we? Okay, so, <clears throat> yeah. Um... If you're looking at the documents, you'll notice that in between all the restricted government memos, which are like very clearly labeled, right, um, and reports are newspaper clippings. Mm -hmm. This is entirely normal when members of the military and the intelligence community are collecting info about events. It gives direct quotes from witnesses, minimizes footwork for agents, and helps to maintain a better record of specifically public perception around topics the government is interested in. That's huge. All that said, yeah. No, no, no. I, I you know, you're right. Like that is huge. Like think about it. You're an agent that's in charge of like looking at a bunch of stuff, covering a bunch of things specifically around a certain subject, uh just including newspaper clippings, especially in a time before the internet. That's a major resource for you. Mhm. Right? Like yeah. that's it's yeah. right there. Yep. Um and more importantly, especially for the government again, covers public perception that is important Mm -hmm. it's a little breadcrumb to later in the episode but all that said let's get back to the story so located on the northern coast of australia is the city called darwin which during the time these reported events took place between the 1960s and 70s held a small but growing population of 15 to eventually 44,000 people to give Joey and Betsy Bay an idea of what that means, Asheville's around 97,000 people. So we're more than cutting the entire population of Asheville in half. This is a pretty small ass city, right? Yeah. Do they even pretty have a impact. Walmart there? I don't even think they had a Walmart. Well, <clears throat> it was tiny, but it was strategically important. Also, Joey, the only Walmart they had was flying in the sky because that thing was. As big as uh, oh, it was huge. Uh, yes. <laughs> but, but yeah. So, so it was a tiny, tiny little coastal city. But mm-hmm. it was strategically important. Now, keep this in mind. You see, Darwin provided a safe port for the U.S. and its capitalist allies to launch military operations by sea and air directly into the increasingly communist Southeast Asia. 
mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. we have Indonesia, we have Vietnam, we have China, we have yep. like all that. We have Korea, like all like right there, and we're talking in like 1959 into the 60s into the 70s, like yep. boom, right there. And if you keep going far enough north, you're in Russia, right? Way the uh, fuck closer than the U.S. is. Yeah. Oh yeah. <clears throat> well, can't they see him just across the? Can't you see him Palin from my can. house? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. When she's on her snow machines. Like I said, all that said, um, the the people of Darwin, along with their neighbors living in the Northern Territory or NT as it's known, mm-hmm. regularly kept their eyes on the skies. An exercise known the world over as a Cold War civic duty. The goal was simple: reporting any and every on sighting to the military. I mean, like, you were literally living in a state of fear. The Russians might come in, drop nukes. There's Russian spies fucking everywhere. Shit's going down, right? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. And so, like, oh, it Lord. was like, and, and like, you're also coming off the high of, like, what, 10 years earlier, 12 years, 15 years earlier, World War II, the height of fucking patriotism for all the motherfuckers that won. Like, mm-hmm. Their government's coming at you, and they're like, look, Russia, they trying to fuck your shit up. They want to make you share your toothbrush. Um, and so, like, people are going out at night, like, and they're sitting, and they're watching the skies, and they're like, god damn, I ain't going to share my fucking toothbrush. So, For like, sure. they're yeah. outside. They're fucking worried as hell about that. Yeah. And this became a thing, like, not just in, like, Australia, but also all over the United States, also all over the U.K., all of the basically capitalist countries, the countries that were like, you know, fuck you, Russia, like at that point in time, all the U.S. Mm-hmm. allies. Um, <clears throat> so this is normal. Now, that's the thing, though. Here's what happens every single time a majority of the population or large sections of the population start looking up more. More anomalies get spotted. Surprise. Right? When yeah. people actually look up in the sky on a regular methodical basis they spot more shit they spot more ufos they spot more phenomenon right Mm -hmm. unknown craft and strange lights find their way into local whispers and eventually the covers of newspapers such as the more than likely sighting of a meteor described as a fireball seen in mid-august 1959 over darwin or the not likely sighting of a meteor described by hunters as a glowing red blob moving up and down at the exact same time. Mm. I don't know about you, but I don't remember any blobs in astrology class or astronomy class or astronomology class moving up and down. Not really a thing that they do. I don't know. Yeah, that, yeah, that's no. my take on that. Definitely not an astrology class. Yeah, maybe astronomology. Yeah. But... <clears throat> <laughs> no, but but this is this is an important point and this is actually covered in the in the document which I'm not going to constantly recite the title of cuz Jesus Christ they could have picked better titles. Um very government but, title. <laughs> but but it is cited as like a newspaper clipping, yeah. right? Um specifically a newspaper article from a local Darwin newspaper that mentions like da 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 this and that and the other and it sounds a lot like a meter. It's like there was a vapor trail behind it. It burned up. There was an explosion. There was no sound. Da 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 da. Also, some hunter saw a red blob that was moving up and down. It was like one sentence at the end of it where it's like strange light seen of a Darwin, and then it was like brrr, like fifteen paragraphs. Then it's like also some people saw this shit. And just like <laughs> wait, hold, oh wait, what? Why are you reporting on a meteor, bro? Like, why are you, you interviewed mm. these other folks, right? Like, you could have asked them more questions, but you're just like, yeah, you saw what? Yeah, fuck that. Anyways, tell us about this meteor. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. it was it was ridiculous, right? But this is a trend that will keep up over and over again. I've got some bias here. A little prelude to that, right? Well, yeah. Whether they all saw the same thing or... Two different events is hard to say, but what is certain is that a split in perception of sightings was growing in Darwin, a split that would continue over the next 15 years, but back to 1959. So in reaction to the increase of strange sightings and honestly in line with an international popular social trend, which is, I think, important to keep in mind, Darwin became home to a branch of the Australian Flying Saucer Research Society. In late August 1959, dear God, we need to bring those back. Its Mm -hmm. stated focus was simple and highlighted in a Darwin newspaper at the time announcing their first gathering. 
They were to study, quote, the origin of flying saucers, the reason for their close interest in the Earth, and, quote, the veil of secrecy surrounding flying saucers. This was in mm. 1959. That's yeah, usual. I feel yeah. like everything is in the newspaper back then was just like, look at the flying saucers. <laughs> It's like what nowadays they'd be like, and that's look at the, the nowadays it's like look at the stupid people who believe in flying saucers. Yeah, that's the title instead of look at the flying saucers that we all saw. Frank, who once failed third grade math, thinks he saw a flying saucer, and the abridged, the first quote is, "I don't know why my third grade math test is in question here," and he's like, "Frank is a plumber," and you're like, "Why are you insulting my occupation? It's a legitimate yeah. career. You would have nowhere to shit if it wasn't for me." Is Frank paying taxes? Like, it's just like, why can can, yeah. can we just talk about the sighting? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, my taxes have nothing to do with it, even though I am paying, not paying them. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Sorry, future Joe, you're gonna have to edit that part real quick. Um, <laughs> they're listening. Oh, um, yeah. but no. So, so I did, I did want to highlight that part, like that that whole section. There are three main goals, right? Um, I wanted to highlight this here, not just because the declassified government documents included this copy of a newspaper article, right? Which, in my opinion, does say something that the government felt the need to keep tabs on flying saucer research groups. Data. I just kind of want to point that out, that this was included in the folder, right? But because there was already a public split in reporting events and already a growing call for advocacy and transparency around UFOs in 1959. Mm-hmm. Like, this is this is an area of more or less rural Australia that's forming its own chapter of something that is essentially adopting the platform of a pre-existing organization. This shit has been set in stone for a while. We're only yeah. 12 years after Roswell. Within 12 years, people that are in the UFO community are like, there's a government cover-up. This shit's fucked up. Why are they lying to us? Yeah. Like, that... To me, I don't that's know. Huge. Like that, that's a big thing. I mean, that's, you know, that's, especially right after ever, the governments were like seen as good guys and seen as like, look at this cool, the stuff we're doing to help everybody to save the world, and then now they're just like, hey, by the way, you know, like let's cover all this shit up. But I guess they kind of learned, you know, a lot of governments yeah. kind of learned espionage, especially during World War Two, because I feel like that was the great learning of of war. That was the great learning of everything happening. Honestly, yeah. it's it it, wor- it made the world worldwide. It made everybody yeah. connected, and so I think that like a lot of it, governments started going like, now we need to have bigger secrets because yeah. now it's we have weapons. <clears throat> you know, now we have weapons of mass destruction. We have friggin' atomic bombs. Not everybody had them, but like, two well, the enemy countries. the enemy went from being like over there to anywhere. Yeah. Espionage. You know, like Huge. straight up, it was just like, we have mm-hmm. to keep these giant secrets from the Germans. And then it was just like, yeah. now the Russians could be anywhere. They're watching us. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like, yeah, for but sure. like, but it says so much about the history of just like UFO, the UFO community to me, that mm-hmm. one of the three pillars was the veil of secrecy surrounding flying saucers. Like 12 years in, bro. Yeah. Like it was That's that crazy. obvious back then. I don't know. Yeah. That Still shit, obvious. like, it, it was a solemn <laughs> moment when I was writing that, and I was just like, damn, this shit been going on for a minute. <laughs> like, yeah, even we, in, other, we, in other countries especially, too. Yeah, I'm like, we've been on this kick for a while. In my mind, it shows that at least to some extent, the Flying Saucer Research Society was right. Hmm. There was a veil of secrecy. The government was watching them and reporting their activities in literal classified reports, That's right? Crazy. We have to look yeah. back at that historically. They were saying that there's a veil of secrecy, yada, yada, yada. But now we can look back at it, right? Um, yeah. 60 years later? I think that's about right. Yep. Um, we can look back at it about 60 years later, and we can be like, oh, shit, the government was watching them because we're reading The government's this. always watching those. <laughs> it's true. Well, well, that's a crazy <clears throat> thing to think about, too, because, like, the government not only was taking videos, you know, taking photos, news clippings of the actual alien things happening, you know, like yeah. the 
the the paper printing this stuff, their yeah. responses to it, and people's responses to them. Now they're actively surveilling the not just the UFOs. They're re- surveilling the people that are looking into it. Yeah, that are trying to get information for it. So that's like a complete flip as well of like, like of would- of of new. It's that's new, you know. Yeah, at this time, and not now, but at that time, that's like a, a new thing. Like they weren't wrong. Mm-hmm. Like I had to like look at this, and I was like, "Well, that's a little paranoid." And then I realized I'm reading this in a fairly recently um, declassified government document, and I'm like, "Oh, actually, they were totally right." That would suck. Like, though. It's like I'm, seventy I'm, years I'm... later, you're just like, "God <laughs> damn it, I was right." <laughs> I fucking told you. Like yeah. the only reason, the only fucking reason why I know about the uh, shit. Where is it? Um, the Darwin branch of the Australian Flying Saucer Research Society is because I'm reading it in a up until 2013 classified briefing with a copy of a newspaper article about them existing. They were That's keeping crazy. track of them. Yeah. <laughs> like that's the it, only reason why I know I'm not yeah. going through the microfiche of like Darwin news archives although I really want to and if you want to fund me please hit me up I will be your sugar baby. All right. So <laughs> yeah. um but all that said he will. right so Me too. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a it's my job. I'm the research. Damn it. Every time. <laughs> Anyways, now this could simply be because it had to do with UFOs and the government like at the time was trying to report on all things UFO, right? Like mm-hmm. that is a fair, in my mind, that was a fair immediate argument was yeah. like, no, they weren't monitoring the group. They were, somebody was tasked or people were tasked with monitoring all things UFOs. So yeah. they included the group. That's fair. Yeah. Right. And frankly, um, I completely agree. Um, People are lazy. And if your job was to, I don't know, um, get everyone's phone number and address in a city, why wouldn't you just get a damn phone book? Right? Like, you would just go to the source and be like, y'all are covering that shit. You would just get a phone book. But here's the flip. If you keep thinking through that process, if that is the case, then that is exactly why they would monitor the group. I mean, this is just a direct line to new, like, UFO events and news. The, yeah. it, the argument just keeps circling is what I'm trying to speed yeah. everybody up through the the thought process of. Is yeah. It's like, well, they weren't monitoring the group. They were just tasked with monitoring all things UFOs, which is why they monitored the group. It, it, yeah, exactly. That's why they monitored <laughs> the UFO group. Yeah, they it's were like, monitoring. But they weren't them. monitoring the group. It's like, no, it kind of sounds like they were trying to keep up with all the information around the fucking UFO group. <laughs> like, yeah, they're it, sitting it there, falls into a loop. They're sitting there watching the each group from the thing. He, Greg Roman took his trash out today. <laughs> Is there UFO information in that trash? Look I'll up find out. Sky. I'll find out <laughs> yeah. after I eat my Hungry Jacks. <laughs> this episode brought to you by Foster's. Um, so, which is not Australian for beer. <laughs> yeah, I learned they speak English, and they got real mad. So, <laughs> dubbed the Mandora Monster, it was first sighted by the owner of a local resort, Alan Carter, who also happened to be a former test pilot. Shout out to the last episode. You'll know how I feel about former test pilots. Now, according to They're a mixture. Best. <laughs> did the best. Mm-hmm. Uh, ac- according to a mixture of restricted government memos, as well as quotes from a local newspaper, it was at 6:30 p.m. on September 24th, 1959, when Mr. Carter first saw. Listen up, y'all. Listen, everybody, listen up. Get your ear balls ready. Get your ear holes ready. Have you guys noticed that most of UFO sightings are always in September? Like during fall season. Oh my god, it's September 1st. Oh my yeah. but hey. Ooh. Damn girl, that's a good observation. Good observation. I've been wanting to start this podcast called The Black Cat Report and Betsabe, I would love if you were on it. Just saying, just throwing it out there. Mm. Think about <laughs> it. Give it a thought. All right. It was at 6.30 p.m. on September 24th, 
1959, when Mr. Carter first saw a 90 to 100 foot long shallow black craft traveling just below the water's surface, leaving absolutely no wake and going roughly between 80 to 90 miles an hour. Dang. That's really slow. That's slow Is for it, a craft. Though? So, <clears throat> I, I, I have some points here about that. I mean, I have some this points is just here. a Costco UFO. <laughs> I mean, that's how fast I drive on the street. Or Sam's Club. Allegedly. Oh. <laughs> um, but not in the water, my friend. So, this event would go on to be further corroborated by another witness, a woman with binoculars whose account of the strange black craft matched perfectly to Mr. Carter's, right? Like, And mm-hmm. the only name I could find was literally woman with binoculars. So <laughs> take it how you take it. Fast forward now to the morning, right? The next morning at 7.15 a.m. Mr. Carter sees the same object again off Mandora and watches as it shoots up through an area called Middle Arm. Now, for reference <laughs> here, because, like, again, I'm going here on some, some like, debunker, like, kicks. Like, what's the first thing? Somebody sees, like, a massive black object traveling just below the surface going really fast. My first thought on that would be submarine. Yep. Right? Okay. But submarines do not, do not go 80 to 90 miles God per hour. God damn it, Joey. Where were you when I was looking on Wikipedia? Now, for reference, the fastest submarine that has ever been recorded it's going about 52 miles an hour. That's pretty fast, though, underwater. But yeah, It was technically like 51.6. I'm just going to round it 52. Yep. 52 miles per hour is the fastest. It was a Russian submarine. It was a fa- I think they could, literally called it like Golden Fish or some shit like that. Like it was, it was the fastest submarine ever recorded. It was 52. Either way, the, the point is here, um, <laughs> like on average, nowadays, modern submarines, fastest they go, at least known, is 23 to 34 miles an hour. I th- that's nowhere that's close to 80 to 90 yeah. miles an hour. 90 miles per hour is uh 78 knots. Just That is fucking insane. That's heavy. Wait, that so is, is that fast? Yes or no? For a no, submarine, no. yes. That is 90 submarine. miles per hour is super fast. So it 90 would... miles per hour is um 3 times better than we're able to do with our current technology. Yeah. And this is in 1959. So is this a submarine? Or <laughs> it was not a goddamn submarine. That's what I'm trying to say. It doesn't seem like it's a submarine. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, 60, 70, 80. Yeah. Um, so but that's 60... what I'm saying, that it's slow for, because if it was a submarine, oh, okay, yeah, it's fast. But that's why what... I'm saying it's slow, because it was uh, like a craft. Well, yeah, no, it was that, in the that's, water. That's what I'm saying, is that yeah. is three times... What is being reported in 1959, right? In 1959, is three times faster than what we can do with the submarine now. We're we're putting our it debunker is... caps on right now, and we're just trying to figure out Boom! if this could be a submarine. Yeah, is it or a not? submarine? Yeah, we're, Fuck we're, no. we're knocking those out. Yeah. So if this is sixty, sorry, sixty years after it happened, we still have nothing that can come close to this shit. Mm-hmm. Like we Either don't. Either way, I think it's, it's very slow. Yeah. Oh well. Okay. Sure. Fine. You go try to make a better submarine. Now. Um, oh, I will. <laughs> I will. Uh, anyways, send us donations. And we <laughs> send will us make donations a so that I can get to Darwin. All right. We're gonna have a challenge this week. Yes. Um. um uh. We're gonna start a fake Indiegogo campaign. You're gonna <laughs> donate to me if you want me to go to Darwin, Australia. You're gonna donate. Donate to Betsabe if you want her to design a submarine that can go faster than 80 to 90 miles an hour. Well, it has to I go. I promise it won't explode in the ocean like the last oh. one we read about. Like R. I R. said, if you donate to me, I might get a really good podcast episode out of it. I'm going to have a good time. You, everybody wants to see me with a tan. This is why you never see video. Everybody wants me with a tan. But, like, you know, like I'll go down to Australia, I'll wait until it's summer. Okay, it's coming up in a few weeks, right? Like, I'll go down to Australia, or springtime, whatever. I'm, they're backwards. But the point is, um, I'll go down there. Now, and as a fun fact here, Mr. Carter got really, really pissed with the newspaper when they suggested it might have been a fish or a manta ray, saying, quote, I know a fish when I see one. 
Also, I'm sorry in advance, there will be bad Australian accents. Anyways, <laughs> we know from later news reports he still held the sentiment and tone at least a year later when a woman reported seeing a creature in the water with a, quote, seal-like head that was three feet wide. Fucking huge. Well, when asked to compare his sighting to hers, Mr. Carter replied, it definitely wasn't my monster. <laughs> <laughs> he got so pissed. I think it, like the newspaper literally quotes him as he testily replied. <laughs> like it was like it was the most like chill way of being like he was pissed when we suggested <laughs> this. Actually, <laughs> yeah. he's like, I know what a fish looks like. Fuck you. Like he got so mad. I love Australian UFO sightings. They're my new favorite because like yeah, everybody's it- like, man, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> like just, damn! Like They're Americans not as are chill all like, as Brits. Yeah, yeah, and it's like Americans are all just like, uh, I don't know. I mean, I just, uh, I don't. You're not gonna push on my face on TV, are you? You're not. Okay, I just, um, maybe I was mistaken. I don't yeah, know. I don't but know, like, it took I don't me pay my taxes, so I don't want to be on the. It did some things to me, and then it did it again another night, and then I don't know. I mean, everybody saw the time stop. I don't know. Like, that's American. I Australian. It's like, yeah. I fucking saw it. <laughs> fucking you go, saw fuck it. you. <laughs> it's yeah, like, yeah. Satellite, fuck you. <laughs> it's just like, damn, damn. Like, no mistaking. Pure confidence. I They're being more it. American than the Americans are about this. Exactly. <laughs> you know? <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> They're being more American than Americans are right now. They're just like, fuck you, mate. <laughs> yeah, we're all just like insecure and shit. Like, yeah. You see a kangaroo. You see how buff a kangaroo is. You can't live out here with insecurity. Fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, Bitch, I'll bust down your door. Then All they're right, on so- the, They're looking at him. And they're like, "Did you see a kangaroo?" <laughs> and he's like, "I didn't see a fucking kangaroo, mate. It was a UFO. I know it." <laughs> knives out no yeah. but like all of the yeah they reports. should have a reality show about it this isn't a ufo that's a ufo <laughs> that's a ufo yeah heart like harken back to the test pilot who was literally the head of like aviation for the darwin flight school right mm-hmm. um that was just like nope wasn't a 707 nope wasn't a satellite nope wasn't it and he's just like saw that three minutes later saw that two minutes before saw that at this time yeah nope, the sun wasn't in that direction couldn't have seen it da, 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 da. and it's just like just like full confidence just like but the same attitude i, mm, I just oh, i love it i read so many ufo reports and like just having folks come to be like fuck you it's just so <laughs> nice it's not just somebody be like i know what i saw it's just like Fuck you, moron. <laughs> it's just yeah, like, yeah. damn. He You're the moron jump- here. <laughs> he just jumps to that. Like, mm-hmm. it's just like, what do you see? Fuck it's you. Amazing. I-, I love it. God, it's beautiful. It's it's just nice to see. I want that confidence for everybody. I, I want that on a bumper sticker. Mm-hmm. Fuck you. You didn't see shit. Like, that's the official BCR bumper sticker. Or now- no, it would be, fuck you, you saw a UFO. <laughs> fuck you, it's a UFO. <laughs> That's a the new UFO. bumper sticker. New bumper sticker. Email new campaign us a slogan. Contact UFO. at blackcat.report if you would like that bumper sticker. Yeah. I'll I want actually it. get our store together. Mm. Um, so <laughs> we are not in this for the money, y'all. Um, now, <laughs> not yet. Now, <laughs> not yet. Now, the sightings of the Mandora monster, right? If y'all remember when I brought that up five hours ago, right? And the attempts to make it a fish. Mm. Um, keep up for years, right? With newspaper headlines reading, Mandora Monster Seen Again in 1960, and quote, Two-hour fight with Ray, the monster toes launch. A giant stingray, believed to be the Mandora Monster, had a two-hour battle with three Darwin fishermen this week in 1962. Hmm. That said, the whole time the news is is pushing their pescatarian point of view. It can be <laughs> noted they are giving the majority of their articles to cases where there is clearly typical sea life involved, right? So mm-hmm. they're only providing a small focus on reports that disagree with their fishy theories. Like when they barely gave a footnote to a woman who said she had seen a quote 
big black shape racing across Francis Bay, traveling twice as fast as speedboat. End quote. Like mm. they give her a footnote in terms of like, look at all these sightings, look at all this shit going on. Report, report, report. Like there's all these clippings and stuff like that. And it's like they give her one sentence, but then they give somebody who's like, Yep, I saw it. It's about twenty five feet long and then it's like fucking fisherman Fran over here was just like, there's a manatee that likes to come around. It's like really into people and, you know, it likes to see people. And then it's just like, here's a wildlife expert. And he's like, yeah, sometimes they have large heads. And then it's just like, then it gets to the part, right? After the headline is like, strange light scene. Then, then it gets to the part, very last sentence, where it's just like, yeah, so it was a giant black shape and it was racing across the bay and it was twice as fast as a speedboat. And they're like, yeah, whatever, bitch. Like, they just like throw it off to the side and it's just like, I'm I'm pretty sure that's the story, my man. Like, that's why burying, are you burying the story? <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> they're they burying the fucking story, right? Yeah. Um, at least that's the vibe I get from reading mm. through way the fuck too many newspaper articles, which you are doing right now if you're looking through the PDF, which you should have found a link to. Indeed. Anyways, either way, what I know is the Australian military was not only keeping track of these events, but also but on at least one occasion, sending out a naval work boat to investigate and search for the fast-moving object seems a little bit excessive if it's just a large manatee. That's all I'm mm-hmm. saying. It's just yeah. like the Navy is literally sending out a work boat on at least one verified occasion. All right, I ain't going to go against the docks, but I am going to say it probably happened more than that. Um, they've sent out a fucking ship on taxpayer dollars to go look for whatever the fuck is going on out in the mm-hmm. waters. A little bit excessive for a large manatee. Now, moving on now to May 24th, 1962. There was a local Darwin News article titled, Three Men See Flying Saucer. After a lapse of many months, an unidentified flying saucer reappeared in Darwin's skies the night before last. The article goes on to quote a man named Kev McCarthy. Awesome first name. A contractor Hmm. driving towards Darwin with two other folks in the car. Also, who the hell has the first name Kev? K-E-V. And not Kevin. Yeah, I love it. You know, like Kev. I'm I'm here for that. Right? So he said, quote, I noticed an object about the size of an aeroplane about a thousand feet up ahead of me and slightly to my left. An important note here. The object was dark compared to the rest of the sky. Right? McCarthy goes on, quote, I drew Ted and Charles' attention to it, and we watched it as we drove for the next 10 to 11 miles. Dang. As the sky got darker, the object started to glow. And when it was quite dark, it looked like a cigar or an object shaped like a saucer seen from the side glowing brightly against the night sky. Y'all, what the fuck? <laughs> like, That's I'm, crazy. That's huge. Like, I'm thinking about, like, the last... Because, like, if you're seeing some crazy shit in the sky, time's slowing down, right? Like, oh, like yeah, we sure. we all saw some shit at one point, right? Like, harken back to a personal paranormal episode, whatever. Like, we, yeah. we talked about it. We've talked about it a million times. This show. We've all seen this... It could be 30 seconds, and it feels like 30 minutes. Yeah, it does. Right, when you're looking back on a memory. And and I just try to think about it as, like, you're on a long road trip, and your your GPS is saying there's 10 miles to home, mm-hmm. right, after you've been driving for 10 hours. Right? Those 10 miles feel fucking long. They feel like forever. Yeah. Driving 10 to 11 miles with a goddamn UFO only a thousand feet in front of you. Like it's keep it's moving in the same direction you are. It's keeping yeah. the same speed as you and it's about a thousand feet in front of you. That's crazy. For ten to eleven that is so fucking long. You're just hoping that it's not going to the same spot that you're going to. It's just like, hey, we're hitting to the Hungry Jacks over there. Oh and, uh, fuck, old... it's at Bucky's too. It's at yeah. Bucky's too. God gotta go over there. But you just keep saying it, and it's just like, God, why can't – can you just, like, go? Like, I just want you to leave, like, so we yeah. can talk about you. <laughs> yeah. But, like, 10 to 11 miles, right? Like, the cl- again, the closest thing I can compare it to for folks that haven't had 
an experience similar to this, right? Um, mm-hmm. Is just like the last 10 to 11 miles of a long ass road trip when you're almost home. Or honestly, even if you're almost there, right? Yeah. That's such a long fucking time to be staring at a UFO, dude. It's crazy. Like, Jesus yeah. fucking Christ. And it's, again, 1,000 feet, honestly, not that far. No. Like, it's really not that far. For a far. huge UFO in the sky, it's just well, like Well, it's about an airplane size. Yeah, but it's like huge. boom. It but it but it was in the sky long enough that it went from daylight outside to fucking dark outside. Yeah, <laughs> like it went from being like, what's that object to up oh, now it's glowing. That's a long ass time to see a UFO. That is I'm sorry, y'all. That is not a fucking airplane. <laughs> like, that UFO is a tease. Not, yeah, <laughs> total cock tease. But yep, like yep. that's just insane. To me. Also, yeah. I really want to point out the fact that they said, um, and this is back, uh, arguably around the time period, but now we know them as like Tic Tacs, right? Yeah. Like now yep. we're thinking about UFOs in Tic Tac shape. This dude straight up says it looked like a cigar. Yeah. Like that similar. gives that yeah. gives credence to me, where it's like the yeah. same kind of like ovular. I don't know if that's a word, but like that oval type shape, right? Like yeah. I don't know. Yeah. What, how much is Tic Tac making from all this this great publicity? As, as far as I know, they waited until like the middle of this year to actually fucking do like a commercial or anything related to like UFOs. And everybody, literally the entire UFO community has just been like, dude, you should capitalize on this. Like, what are you doing? Like, we'd love it. We would we would buy your memorabilia. Just fucking make anything. Like just yeah. like this is cool as fuck, you know. And they're just like, no, nah, I don't know UFOs. Oh, I wonder and- if they were secretly <laughs> donating to UFO ch- people. They were. They, mm-hmm. I bet you. Fresh I'm gonna give this to Tic Tac. You know? yeah. They're like, as Tic-tac. you're talking to your friends that you don't have <gasps> in your basement oh, wait, while no, you're looking Mentos. through this, have a Tic Tac. I always knew oh, yeah. Mentos was the disclosure fresh maker. Um. Anyways. <laughs> Well, so that weird trip aside, which I, I really just wanted to point out, like how, I don't know, something gets something gets surreal to me where it's just like picturing myself in these people's shoes when I'm reading these reports and I'm digging through them and I'm just like, that's a long fucking time to see a UFO. Jesus Christ, right? That's what so, I'm saying. That was a gift. Yeah. Truth, yeah. truth. Yeah. yeah. What a gift. Mm-hmm. What mm-hmm. a twist. So skipping ahead now. The following month, over multiple nights, somewhere around June 21st, 1962, people started seeing strange shit appearing above Darwin Harbor. I'm not going to go into all the references around this period of time, but it is mentioned a lot in the docs, which you would see if you're looking at it. Again, be a good student. That said, try to picture this. A green light appears, right, which shifts into a yellow light the size of a goddamn basketball floating mm. in the sky above a sea-facing harbor. Okay? Yeah, picture it. It's see so it. damn bright. You can see its reflection clearly in the harbor, on the water. Mm-hmm. This is huge. See it? Yep. Then all of a sudden, after watching it for about 10 minutes... This massive technicolor light the size of a full moon turns deep orange and speeds off through the sky. Like it forgot its stove was on and just takes off. Yeah. Right? Like it's just like. Did I lock my door? (laughs) Shit, is my hair dryer. (laughs) Shit, did I buy a hair dryer? (laughs) Fuck, I think my kids were home today. You know, like, you know, but like. I, I, you know, I've been trying to think about this, trying to conceptualize it, and it's like I just looked at the the super moon at least the second day because the first day there were clouds here, but I looked at the super moon, thirty three percent, whatever the crazy amount, like bigger than it will be until twenty thirty seven, right? Um, just happened the other day at the time of this recording. It's not even the size of a basketball in the sky. Yeah, it's nothing. Yeah. Like it's it's literally it's maybe like the size of like a medium sized bouncy ball out of a vending machine, like a little coin machine, like out of the sky. Mm-hmm. If, if that's even a reference anymore, when people hear this, but like, but it is not that big. Now picture yeah. a light 
the size of a goddamn basketball in the sky. That is fucking massive. That's huge. That's yeah. Death Star class. That's so huge. That's Nibiru yeah. huge. Also, I want to point out, yeah, that exactly. <laughs> um, but I want to point out, this is the first time I've ever heard of a UFO that was green. I've never heard that. I've heard blue. I've heard purple. I've heard white. Um, I've heard I've red. I've heard really orange. Heard colors. Yeah, straight up, never it's, heard green before. But that bitch turned the... from green to yellow to the orangish red. It basically was a stoplight. It was a disco. Yeah. Ball. yeah. <laughs> it was a disco ball. It was time to party. Yeah. And then yeah, the motherfucker took hard. off. <laughs> wow. Huh. They just came down here to party. It was one of their like like their stops. Goals. Yeah. No, you know how like bar hopping? This was oh, one of their yes. stops. They were planet hopping. Planet hopping. They we were do cocaine hopping. on Earth. We do DMT on yeah. Mars. We do yeah. uh, acid. We're just on here Jupiter. doing some Molly. Yeah. Yeah. We're just here inventing and doing drugs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why there's so many crashes. The last time we yeah, talked about it, it was the beat. It was the. It was the. Uh, what is it? The uh, sons of the rich people. The uh, <laughs> honestly, the only trust reason, fund. The trust, trust fund, fund babies. The trust fund aliens. The, the, yeah. <laughs> the only reason why they invented like a warp in time and space was to make DMT last longer. That's the honest yes. truth. Yes. They're yeah, like that should only last like seven to ten minutes, bro. Seventy to ton hundred yards. Yeah, yeah. If, you, if you think <laughs> yeah. if you think the people watching the UFO, yeah. it was that was long. You should have seen how long the trip lasted with the aliens. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. bro. I'm not even an alien. <laughs> <laughs> You're the alien. <laughs> what? Um, no, but like, shit's a trip. But but on that kick, and I'm glad you guys are in the perfect, the exact, the 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 relaxed fit of the right headspace for what the local RAAF security officers <laughs> security officers said as his reason for what happened again basketball sized light appeared multiple times shit ton of witnesses multiple nights around mm-hmm. the same time right um yeah, so this might be one of my favorite quotes in all of military official trying to deny UFO history. Mm-hmm. You guys ready for this? We are. Mm-hmm. It, it honestly fits with everything you just said. Quote, <laughs> sorry, I've just read so many denial phrases after reading reports that are in government documents that when I come across a gem, it's just... Quote, <clears throat> it was the planet Venus looking like anything but a planet as she sometimes does. Okay. End quote. <laughs> Damn, was he looking at the, like, was that a female wow. reporter? Or a, ma- a female reporter he was, like, looking at, like, just kind of, like, <laughs> winking? What yeah. What the fuck? Is- I'm sorry, but, like, what the fuck kind of statement? I'm allowed to cuss more. It's Australian. Australians are cool with cussing. Ask Ross <laughs> Coulthard. Um, but, like, what the f- Fuck kind of statement is that? That's not an answer. It was the pla like he starts off, quote, it was the planet Venus looking like anything but a planet as she sometimes does. That sounds what like What does that even of- mean? That sounds like the beginning of a Harlequin romance novel, honestly. That's, yeah, it was very sexual. Know. Why did it sound so yeah, that's sexual? Super sexual. It's like just, not yeah, even I just think, how you read the, it. That was just how he was you know, saying yeah. it. My personal adage for that was that sultry, celestial, shape shifting babe. <laughs> I think yeah. that he, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was sexual when I read it. I, maybe it's the word Venus. My mom's a fucking Wiccan, all right? She's pagan, all right? So, like, Venus has a different connotation to me. Sorry, y'all, Christian race I people. Think, I, don't, I think I that don't no matter that. how okay. you read that, it would have sounded sexual. Because just because yeah. I can just imagine him just reading <laughs> it like. Venus, you know, it could have been uh, Yoakum Crow, like it could have been. A... It was the planet Venus, looking like anything but a planet, as she sometimes does. Like I don't, uh, there's no sexual. way it's not sexy. That's that was the sexiest sexual. thing I've ever yeah, said. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, I. But god damn, that statement is just like. <laughs> Doesn't make sense at all. It's yeah. the. It's like it is the most obvious form of like gaslighting that I've ever come across in like a UFO report, which is saying a lot. It's just like, yeah, no, it's Venus. 
looking like anything besides what you can comprehend Venus looking like, as they occasionally look like. And you're like, yeah. <laughs> like what? <laughs> the fuck did you just say to me? <laughs> you yeah. know, I'm like, I'm like fascinating. God damn, I love that fucking. Mm, I need that tattoo to my other arm. Like, yes. <laughs> he he just farted and lit a match and was like and winked at them. Yeah. He might have been was, that stupid. I don't know that that the level of confidence delivered with that. Mm-hmm. Damn. Anyways, <clears throat> let's jump through this flap now to November 4th, 1963. As we were warned, Venus is out there doing some wild shit. Case in point, this encounter recorded by the news. Title, Fishermen see weird light in local creek. A mysterious orange-colored light traveling about 10 feet above the water was spotted in Racecourse Creek on Monday night by two experienced Darwin fishermen. Obviously, it's Venus. Um, Obviously. So, <laughs> so what was hmm. Venus doing just 10 feet above the water? <laughs> in this You're not just hang out as they usually does. Yep. Yeah. Well, let me pull it up here. Well, let's quote the article that the Australian government, I just want to repeat this here, felt the need to include in a classified folder. Right? Like, we, we I, I don't know. I personally, I had to keep coming back and reminding myself that, like, I'm reading in a folder of classified documents, of memos, of reports. And of newspaper clipping. Why are they including these newspaper clippings? Mm-hmm. Right? Like, why isn't these reports, why aren't whatever the fuck report that they're writing, which is copying content from a newspaper article, why are they including the newspaper article? Why are they including three different versions of the newspaper article spread out over multiple days? There's mm-hmm. a fucking reason. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the fuck it is, but I don't think it's a catch all system. I'm going to be honest. I've been reading through it and, like, I don't get catch-all vibes, okay? I mean, I imagine that there was more articles that they just deemed not worth exactly. worth it, you know? So I think that that's why it makes sense. A mysterious orange-colored light traveling about 10 feet above the water was spotted in Racecourse Creek on Monday night by two experienced Darwin fishermen. Former croc shooter Ted Maloney told the story of the strange sighting today. He said he and Mr. Kevin Young were fishing in Racecourse Creek when a light appeared to rise straight out of the water about 200 yards away in midstream. Quote, The light went straight up, then traveled in a straight line for about 60 feet before disappearing. End quote, Mr. Maloney said. From where they stood, the the light was about the size of a cricket ball. There was no sound, and there didn't appear to be anything under the light. Quote, I have no idea what it could have been. End quote. Mr. Maloney said, quote, But we both couldn't have been seeing things. In fact, Kevin said to me at the time, That beats me, but we couldn't both be imagining it. End quote. Mr. Maloney's light story is similar to the one of many reports that led to the Mandora monster stories of three years ago. On that occasion, strange unexplained lights were seen racing across the harbor well above the water. But one of the reports from an experienced waterman told of a strange craft with a light above it traveling at tremendous speed and disappearing up a creek on the other side of the harbor. Monday's sighting was the first strange light report for over two years. Hmm. Now, I want to throw this in here. Fun fact. That's either shit reporting Right? A blatant lie or a fascinating case of press amnesia. Wow. Okay. Maybe both. The huge ass color changing light seen above Darwin Harbor was only one year before this event. Or if you really want to get technical, 17 months. Not three years, not two years, not even technically a year and a half. But a year and five months. Maybe it's just me being petty and a number cruncher. (laughs) But if you Google Darwin UFO, Darwin Australia UFO, you'll see their local press is still up 
to the same shit. Thank you, Joey, for pointing that out at one point. When you actually fucking type that in and you're like, wow, I can't find anything that's not reported from this year. Yep. It was literally 2022, April through September. Literally everything you look into it is from the same year. And that's 50, 60 years later than it should have been. (laughs) I'm, I'm literally not sure if this flap has ended. Like I'm yeah. honestly not sure looking at news reports. I can I'm only going everything right now off of this folder, off of this collection of documents, right? But I I don't know if this flap has ended because the same shit that's being reported today <laughs> is yeah, it was reported. reported then. Yeah, it was reported in yeah. these government documents in from 1959 to 1974. Yep. It shit is still going on. And the news there is still reporting shit like, apparently a man thinks he saw an orange colored light above the bay. Ha ha ha. And it's like, you realize there's like a longer history of this than your own fucking newspaper, bro? Yeah. Like this and has been going on for so long on a consistent basis. And it's still the same people <clears throat> being like, fuck you, I saw it. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, like they're saying the same thing that they said back then. They're <laughs> no different it. because it's, it's the same it. families and same people being oh like, I fucking saw it, you know? Hey, and it's like they're you. kids saying it. Yeah, fuck you, mate. I just want to see like a little family of Australians popping up the phone. Yeah, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Yeah, we saw it. See, yep, 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 yep. <laughs> yep. Damn. Yep. yep. Love Australia. <laughs> Like, I'm here for it. I we need mm-hmm. to go on an Australian tour. Australia, make us famous. Bring us yep. there. Come on. We're no, probably already seriously. famous there. Yeah, bring us there. More so, Just demand us. us. If you're from Australia, tell us. Tell somebody that makes decisions and have them yeah. demand us. Yeah, there yep. we go. But. But yeah, so I, I like you said, Joey. Though, like the shit just keeps going. I'm not sure if this flap has fucking ended. This yeah. honestly might be one of the one of the hottest UFO hotspots in the world, mm-hmm. right? And I'm checking across different language barriers here. I'm even looking at mythological countries such as Australia. We all know how yeah. I feel about it, but but i'm just saying like i've never heard of a place anywhere in the world that has so many consistent ufo sightings going for so fucking long over 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 it just keeps fucking happening right i know um, why why well because like aliens want to come down and see first of all if australia is real second of all mm. because they see all this crazy shit in australia and they're like, how are these people real? Like, they deal with, like, this humongous yeah. insects. They have this really buff kangaroos. They have, like, monsters of all kinds. So yeah. they're curious. You know, they come down and they're curious. curious. Yeah. 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 Um, and what really sucks, though, about Mystery alien Soul. TV, about yeah. alien TV, is that they only get the Discovery Channel. Um, <laughs> and they really just they got hooked on the crocodile hunter yeah and they saw a season and it just ended and now they're trying to figure out how it ended and i don't have the heart to tell them i don't have the heart to tell them what happened to him joey i'm gonna go deeper they watch tennis too i will i'm gonna say it i will make out with any fan who can reply (laughs) (laughs) Who can reply? Someone's within, thirsty. Within the next three days of the publication of, the of this podcast, Wednesday. Wednesday, yes. Um, <laughs> I will make out with any fan for five minutes wow. if you catch wow. this reference. The reason why aliens are coming to Australia is because they're trying to encourage. Australia to restart the show Danger 5. What the fuck, you? There we go! All right. The only thing I'm sure of, back to the script, the only thing I'm sure of is that the press there does a fantastic job making it seem like every time it's new, right? Mm -hmm. Or that people don't know what the fuck a fish looks like. 
<laughs> Anyways, if you listened to last week to episode number 60, you should recall the crazy report we covered from the ship sailing near uh, the DeGroote Islands, right? The mm-hmm. one where the compass goes haywire, the sea starts glowing with a massive light, described as being literally miles wide and 400 yards across, and then eventually this thing, this USO, this unidentified submerged object, comes to within six feet of the ship where the crew notices that there is a swirling shadow in the center of it. Kind of the climax of the last episode, and honestly the climax of this whole 15-year flap, at least according to what we can figure out right now, right? Well, they watch it for so long that they have time to record the pattern of the shadow moving across the lights, which is just a fucking trippy-ass observation to me. Like, if you really step Mm -hmm. back and you think about, like, you're not looking at the lights, you're not looking at the movement. You've been dealing with this shit for so long that you're like, oh, wait a second, that's not pulsing? No, Mm -mm. No, it's it's, it's kind of like a a dimness swirls around over top of the existing... It's like a shadow moves of across... (laughs) Of the existing lights. That's what we're looking at. We're not looking at the lights. We're looking at the shadow, boys. Like, that is how That's fucking long, long time, yeah. they saw this shit. <laughs> they had time to, like, go into, like, an art abstract of viewing it. And they were like, hmm, fascinating. You know, like. Fascinating, yeah. It's fucking beautiful. Well, to quote them on that specifically, quote, the pulsations timed at 12 for nine seconds. Then completely irregular, then settled down for 12 for nine seconds. The shit went on for an hour. They they watched this shit for, you know, 35, 45, 55 minutes. Basically, they just watched this shit, mile-long fucking ship underneath the water, looking at it, swirling shadow light vortex, along with a bunch of other little... Go back to episode 60. Listen to it. It's it, it's a fun episode. Anywho, yeah. Time for a side quest, motherfuckers. I posted that story on to the subreddit, our UFOs, or sorry, quote specifically, our UFO. Got a lot of honestly really excellent comments, but one in particular sent me down another rabbit hole. Hmm. Shout out to Wonderful Trifle 1221, who said, Holy shit, the magnetometers on SBIRS are for tracking UAP. If they interfere with a compass, they can definitely track them with a magnetometer. And it explains why the military satellite system is watching the magnetosphere. Now, I didn't know any of this. Okay. I still don't um, know any of this. Yeah, right. I had no clue if it was true, right? But I did have some fun new keywords to Google, and sure enough, it led me to a document hosted on NASA's website. Mm. Ooh, I love research. God damn it. Oh, God, research gets me so giddy. But goddamn. <laughs> Oh, y'all, does it get better? And I already shared this with him. He saw it, and he was just like, damn, that's a good find, right? Um <laughs> Joey, um, I would like our yes. beautiful listeners to hear this discovery fresh. Okay. Bet Spy, we're about to go deep. So strap in and strap on. We ready to go, <laughs> okay? Okay. <laughs> no, but this is real. I, I only warned Joey ahead of time. I was like, hey, just real quick, is it cool if I just hit you up with a random leak and, you know, like, force you to read it and he was like of course yes anytime homie and i'm like fuck yeah bro he's never fuck seen yeah. this shit i'm gonna yep, guide him not. through it joey i'm hitting you up on chat my brother okay. and here is the link it's going to forcefully download a pdf enjoy also this will be in the show notes if you also want to have it forcefully downloaded <laughs> let me know we get that opened tis opened awesome y'all good to go mm-hmm we- hmm. All right, so I've already read it. So what I'm going to do, you know, have you look this over. I'm going to guide you through the pages that I found notes on, right? Okay. Yep. That's based strap on. All right. I'm going to need you to read specifically the title and the year of the document. That is on page 
one. Page one. Yeah. Yes. Field Resonance Propulsion Concept. National Aeronautics and Space Administration. NASA, Washington, D.C. August 1979. August 1979. That year is not super significant, except for the fact that that was a long fucking time ago for people that are hearing this. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> now... I'm going to need you to scroll down to page three and read the forward. Full detail, Bets Bay, listen to this shit. Forward. The speculative propulsion concept described in this paper was presented at a special session of the 15th Joint AIAASAEASME Propulsion Conference, June 18 through 20th, 1979. In quotations, propulsion concepts for galactic spacecraft. Wow. Is this okay. on the NASA website? In ah! quotes. <laughs> this is fun. The concept was developed as the result of private, unofficial research. NASA <laughs> and here's, here's the next part that's going to make it even funner. NASA is not involved in UFO research. <laughs> However... <laughs> The research, which may be stimulated by this paper, could result in the verification of the essential elements of this concept and in feasibility studies concerning the development of a new generation of NASA spacecraft. Alan wow. C. Holt. Can we stop real quick before you scroll anymore, before you guys react anymore? Mm -hmm. Y'all, what the fuck? <laughs> they wow. figured out how to make a new what spacecraft. What the fuck? This was... This was the homies. Um, th this was this was his response. He's like, "That's why government satellites are tracking the magnetosphere. That's why da 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 da." Because I posted, I I only posted the report about that ship and about how the compass completely fucked up and went off course, and they had to start steering by the stars. Do you guys remember that shit from last mm -hmm. week? Best yep. way you remember that shit? Like, yeah. shit was crazy, right? Yep. He was like, "Oh." That's why they're doing that. And I was just like, don't know what you're talking about, but I'm going to look up some of the words you just used. And I was like, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> it was yeah. just like, NASA.gov. Wow. Here's some crazy shit we did. And I was just like, yeah. wait, what year was it? 1970 70. fucking nine. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so okay. this is wild because if they did that in 1979, imagine what they have now. I ain't even trying to imagine. I'm still stuck in the Stone Age when it comes to NASA. I'm with you on that, but I'm just going to be honest. I can't imagine that. Joey, I'm going to need you to go to um, – let me check my notes here because, again, I I want everybody to experience what I experience when I go on a research binge and I start finding shit like this. I oh – God, dude, I feel like this is like me I trying to encourage – I love the drawings too. This is me trying to encourage everybody to go to the library, but like this shit gives me a fucking high when it's three in the morning and I start digging and then mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, wait, what the fuck? And then I come across another thing and I'm like, wait, what the fuck? And then it's just like, how do I explain this to people without sounding crazy? And it's just like, no, Ooh. this is on a government website. <laughs> it's here, yes. right? All right, Joey, yeah. I'm going to need you to scroll down to the, the PDF page. I think it's labeled differently on the physical PDF. But the PDF page, um, page number seven, and I guarantee fucking to you. Already there. You're going to know <laughs> this section that you're supposed to read on yep. page seven. I already found it before you even said page seven. It, I scrolled down it's and then was so like, oh, this is interesting. Yeah. God, I love research. All right, where would you like uh. me to start? You know where to start, Joey, to start. UFO research. <laughs> UFO studies indicate that the unexplained residual UFO phenomena may be due to extraterrestrial visitors, parapsychological experiences, or a combination of the two. Ooh. If wow. some UFO phenomena are caused by extraterrestrial visitors and very advanced spacecraft, then the frequency of visits and the large number of different types of visitors... In quotation, in in parentheses, many different humanoids have been described. Oh my god! Yep. <laughs> Imply an ability to cross large stretches of galactic and intergalactic space in relatively short time frames. This is getting my stuff. I love this part of it. Yep. Oh, it just already said that there's many different types of aliens. They just said that in in parentheses. <laughs> this in is this thing. in a unofficial. This report, is NASA too. But 
But this has been here. It is consulting NASA on this whole intergalactic time. travel. Yeah, since yeah. 1979, it's been available. It's right there. And like, no one has said anything about this. Crazy. Yeah. This is why I fucking love research, B. Hell yeah, girl. You are fucking right. This is what I'm saying. Yes, Joey, keep going. Keep going, bro. If the speed of light is a true limit of velocity in space time, then the mm-hmm. potential extraterrestrial visitors must utilize a form of transportation which transcends space and time to keep the trip time short, which we uh, see yeah. every time. That's why we see those weird little the things around it and the propulsion. That's why you don't hear that's sounds around it. That's why. Anyways, yep, that's why every photo is blurry because that's what happens. UFOs are often observed to disappear instantaneously. In the subset of the cases... The UFO later repe- reappears at a nearby location, implying a disappearance from and a reappearance into space time. That's crazy. Wow. The okay. Highest- <laughs> can we like okay, can we like pause for a second? <laughs> no, like- <laughs> dude. This is the shit, dude. This is yo, I'm sorry. This episode completely went off the rails. Um, it's somewhat of a mixture between uh episode sixty and this episode. Y'all deal with it. Just listen to it in order. You'll be fine. Betsy Bate, please give me the honest reaction to this shit. Well, I'm like, trying, and you keep yeah. interrupting. No, no, no. I, th- that was for the listener. I want to hear you. I want to hear you, girl. Please, please. We all do. Okay, so this, again, it's just been chilling in mm-hmm. this NASA website that anyone can just, like, go in, read, whatever. Yep. But obviously, no one does because no one, like you know, takes the time like you do to do research like this. So everyone's been waiting for years, for years, for so many years to just hear the government say, like, yes, aliens are real. Mm -hmm. And then, but this has been here this whole time. So basically NASA has confirmed that, yes, there's extraterrestrial human beings with cool spaceships by just typing this and just having it on their website. So NASA has always just been out there with this. Le- legally, no. What do you mean legally, no? So this at is the an forward, illegal download? It, at, at it the, was found. No, 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 no. At the, at the very forward, it speaks that this is, how can I put this? One of their consultants... Right, that's the best way I think I can put this in as a brief notes. One of their one of their consultants was saying this is their opinion, their professional opinion, at an official function that NASA was recording and interpreting and processing and planning off of and doing everything else in the world off of. But they're just saying, look, 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 look. Like, in my humble opinion. Yeah. So, um, honestly, which I'm I'm sorry, but the jig is up. Like, we live in a contractor generation where everybody's fucking job is as a contractor. Nobody's an actual fucking employee of a business anymore. Everybody's a contractor. And guess what we're modeled off of? The government during the 1950s, the 1960s, the 1970s, the 1980s. They're a quote unquote contractor who yeah. legally only represents that contractor speaking. Yep. But actuality, the government is paying a shit ton of money to to give us their opinions. They're legally separated, right? But they're yep. just close enough that they benefit. It's that one step away to get that info. That they're, they're, they're holding that exactly. tiny wall. That's saying like but, we don't believe we oh oh NASA saying we don't believe this, but we will <laughs> yeah and yeah. we're gonna I, we're gonna use this but I but I'll back you up hundred percent beyond the fact that like we know what the fuck a contractor means now, right? Like I'm a contractor for multiple businesses and if I fuck up, they could lose tens of millions of dollars. That's like real life, right? Like my opinions fucking matter when I go into work. Right? Like, straight up, my opinions could lose millions of dollars. Okay? That motherfucker's opinions could lose billions of dollars. Why are they listening to him? Yeah. So, like, yeah. I'm, he, he, is, he is legally not an employee, 
but yeah, he's a fucking employee, and NASA just basically admitted to it, and it's entirely online, and it's been available. Also, there are hundreds of thousands of documents just like this, and just like the Darwin UFO flaps documents that are all across the fucking internet, but we have been flooded with so many documents all at once. People don't know where the fuck to look because they have names like E39667 underscore 22739X45Z. Nobody knows to look at that. Yep. You can't find it. And when you use um, uh, optical or when you use like character recognition software, right? Like OKRs or sorry, OCRs. Um, When you use OCRs, it doesn't read the shit the same. It doesn't read the shit properly. And so even if you mass scan all these documents and then try to search it, it's super inefficient and super fucked up. You have to go through, you have to manually retype these fucking documents yeah. unless you get lucky, like I did. And, but, and girl, you write, is... this is a fucking score. And thank you, hold on, person with the name trifle in your name. I appreciate you. <laughs> 1221. Yeah. Um, You were the shit. You sent me on that rabbit trail, which led me to, with your keywords, led me to a literal nasa.gov document (laughs) that has been open in public from 1979 where they are talking about UFO propulsion systems and how to apply them to Earth technologies. This is fucking insane. Please read it. That's what I'm like, what? (laughs) Please read it because there's freaking diagrams. They have diagrams. Yeah. They have diagrams. Like we can build it if we want to. This is why I love research. (laughs) Yes, it worked. That's all I got. That's all I got this week. That was my conclusion. That was my, that was my, you know. Wow, you just like drop a bomb just like this. Cool, we can build a spaceship. But again, that's why I'm like, if this was in 1979, imagine what they have now. Like, what? A hundred percent. And imagine, honestly, imagine what Darwin and the government's obsession with recording these types of events, not just in Darwin, Australia, but all across the world. Imagine what recording these events meant for that fucking meeting. Mm -hmm. This is the shit that they were referencing. Yeah. Yeah. When they went up and they talked about galactic space travel capabilities based on electromagnetic functions, like, that is the shit from motherfuckers on a ship seeing a mile, multi-mile long UFO glowing under the water fucking up their compass. Yep. It is because of those reports that they had that meeting. I love this shit. I'm sorry. Like, no no shame on my end. Like, this shit is fascinating to me. I dig into these reports, and I'm like, yo, wait, what? Hold on. What did you just say? <laughs> I'm just like, this shit is... Ugh. Yeah. I'm so about it. I'm so into it. I hope everybody I, else is, I'm too. I'm just like... You have to check out these documents one fucking time, listeners. But... I love you guys, but, like, you do it one time. You do it one time and it hits that note and you will be addicted, guaranteed. You will be mm-hmm. like, wait, hold up. This is my new fucking Sunday reading. Like, this is, what? Like, this is <laughs> spilling tea, bro. Like, oh, God, I love it. Get into If you're interested, for sure, if you're interested in learning about future tech that's coming down the line, look at this stuff. Because so just, dope, like, dude. reading about it and there was the thing that, one of the congressmen and the David Grush and uh, yep. two other things they said something about slips warp, warp warping time or wormhole mm-hmm. theories and stuff like that that are like there's just pages and pages of theories, and where do you think those pages and theories are going? And labeled. Betsy Bay, I'm gonna direct you down a fucking rabbit hole, and I can't wait to do a multi-bot series with you on this. Um, and listeners, dig into it too. I challenge you. Get bored at a future episode. I don't think you will. I challenge you. Betsabe, here's my challenge. Here's here's my promise. Here's my exciting thing I want to deliver to you. If you go to CIA.gov, <clears throat> go to their go to their declassified section. They have a section that's labeled, it's categorized, called Project Stargate. 
It is all of the CIA's experiments, or at least all the ones that they've currently released and have. There's thousands of documents. It is the CIA's documents on psychic programs, remote viewing, telekinesis. (laughs) Um, Basically, long-distance assassinations. (laughs) Um... All their crazy, kooky, psychic programs that they try. They have a whole section, thousands and thousands of documents you can read about their tests into psychic warfare. Mm -hmm. It's labeled. Just go to the website. Nobody goes. They probably had one of their fucking remote viewers decide, yeah, nobody's going to go here. You can just put that online. Everybody will be yeah. happy. Like, and nobody goes to it. This she is, you will stay awake until four in the morning just being like, oh my God. <laughs> oh I mean, my, it's, they, a, it's a good did, reason that nobody goes and reads those because people yeah. would just could not handle the shit's fucking insane. Yeah, no one would sleep. You. That is that is yep. the all right. Every episode we like to have like a, a soft lesson or kind of a hard lesson um, around like what is the theme, what is the topic, what is the point. This this episode is go fucking look, like go online, Google some crazy ass shit and just look into it. I'm not saying go down a spiral and listen to anybody else. Literally, the message of this entire episode is go look at the fucking documents yourself. Go read through these newspaper clippings these classified memos these reports Mm -hmm. make up your own mind it is so fucking exciting when you come across something that that you can say is (laughs) to use a a very strong phrase it's your own Mm -hmm. right like you were like i just googled everything involved in this nobody on the internet is talking about it Mm -hmm. i'm the one with the documents i'm the ones I, I'm the one with the resources. I'm the one with the references. I'm the only one that knows this plethora of information, and I've got the proof. It's yeah. been sitting there. I found it. Now I can bring it to folks. It's such yeah. a good feeling, y'all. Please, go out, research, Google. Fucking look up a word that you don't know. I don't know, anything. Just find something new this week, please. I love y'all. Thank you so much for listening to the Black Cat Report in our episode 61, Australian Declassified Documents. Gil really enjoyed the research on this one. We hope you enjoyed it and stick around for future UFO episodes. Remember to like, review, and follow us wherever you get your podcasts. And also, follow us on Instagram to find the most up-to-date information. And we'll see you next week on the other side.